point, Skullface's plan is almost complete. At that point, I will no longer be of use to him. I must leave behind this record, at least. A record of how the ancient vocal cord parasites became these abominable ethnic cleansing parasites. I believe he has two purposes for the ethnic cleansing parasites. The first, as their name suggests, is ethnic cleansing. This conflict between East and West that envelops the world will not last much longer. Once the Cold War ends, and the weight of America and the Soviet Union is lifted away, the ethnic conflicts they kept suppressed will all rise to the surface. It is not difficult to imagine that the radical sides will begin cleansing their adversaries. But what if an ethnic cleansing parasite matching the language of the aggressors were to be unleashed? The aggressors would be washed off the earth. At the very least, the idea that retaliation could eradicate your people would prove a powerful deterrent. The second purpose is the Englishization of the world. To cipher the organization, this is probably their main use. Man thinks in words, or rather, words are man's very means of thinking. If you erase a word representing some concept, the concept itself disappears from the world. Nishone means beautiful in Navajo. But the image that comes to mind when we say Nishone differs from the Black Anas beautiful. An azure sky, a rolling landscape, lush greenery. The meaning we place in Nishone has its roots in Diné culture. If we lose the word Nishone, the images of our beautiful homeland would be washed away into oblivion along with it. Just as Orwell indicated years ago, Cypher, being based in America, is pushing Englishization for this very reason. Suppose all five billion people on this planet come to read, speak, and think in English. Their wills could also be streamlined under English. Cypher's control would be all the easier. Economic governance would progress in leaps and bounds. The ethnic cleansing parasites would be a great aid in accomplishing this goal. There is no need to destroy every language besides English. All they need to do is weaken other dominant languages competing with it. Russian, Chinese, Arabic. If people know they risk their lives speaking such languages, they will flock to the lingua franca that is English. Cypher need not even focus attention on smaller languages. After all, they are already being eaten away by English. Business, education, film, commodities, English, has permeated every area of global society. I can see this when I look at young Diné. Some of them have already lost their grasp of the Navajo language. It is said that over 2,000 languages of the world are facing extinction. This very moment, cultural concepts and forms of expression are disappearing forever. The spread of electronic networks gives greater meaning to Englishization. Networks have no national borders. But basing them on a single language, they can penetrate deeper into and between people. That basic point of unity provides the ideal environment for someone who aims to control people's wills. But how does this differ from building the Tower of Babel? The ethnic cleansing parasites attempt to rob man of his words. Such irony. It was the vocal cord parasites that gave words to him in the first place. Ancient man had no language. 
unable to produce complex sounds due to the structure of the throat. He could communicate only through simple vocalizations and gestures. Then the vocal cord parasites infected his larynx. Man's transition to walking upright did not gift him solely with intelligence, but also with his voice. At the time, the vocal cord parasites never harmed man. They merely took a small measure of nourishment. In fact, you could call it a symbiotic relationship. Some animal species use particular vocalization patterns to attract a female and reproduce. Songbirds, certain insects, and also the vocal cord parasites. The difference is that the parasites themselves did not produce sounds. Rather, they had their hosts, man, do it for them. Once secure on the human host vocal cords, a male vocal cord parasite caused the host to produce a certain sound pattern. Something like a warble of a bird. Meanwhile, females parasitizing other host pharynxes need only wait. Upon hearing the sound pattern of an attractive mate, they would manipulate their hosts into making contact with the person it came from. The female traveled through his host's saliva to the other host's vocal cords where the male was waiting and the pair copulated. We can only imagine how the female manipulated his host, but it was probably through smell. Smells traveled directly to the limbic system via the olfactory cilia in the nasal cavity. Volatile compounds released by the female would stimulate the limbic system, which controls instincts, making the host feel amorous. This kind of sexual selection naturally led to competition between the male parasites. Males that had their hosts produce sounds perceived by females as more attractive succeeded in copulating and producing offspring. Evolutionary traits caused by sexual selection are curious. The peacock's feathers, the mannequin's dance, the firefly's luminescence pattern. Even with courtship behaviors that are not advantageous to survival, those individuals that excel in them produce offspring, and it escalates with each generation. The same was true of the vocal cord parasites. Courtship vocalization rhythms and intonations became more sophisticated, and in order for man to produce such sounds, they had to alter his vocal organs. By lowering the position of the larynx and developing resonating chambers, they enabled more complex pronunciations. But that was not all. The vocal cord parasites activated a transcription factor that would later control man's language ability. A protein that due to its appearance is called 4 kid box protein P2, or Fox P2. Activating this transcription factor led to the development of brain function capable of creating sophisticated frequency changes. This was the pinnacle of the vocal cord parasite's prosperity. However, this sophisticated pronunciation control was too useful for man to ignore. Once human sexual activity ceased to be only seasonal, and having lost pigment-based sexual characteristics, distinctive vocalizations became the most effective means for humans to attract mates as well. Combined with logic pathways hardwired into the brain, or universal grammar, it was not long before advanced communication was possible. This was the birth of language. Luckily for man, it was around this time that a particular retrovirus was circulating. While not lethal, it infected not only man, but the vocal cord parasites as well. It is presumed that this virus removed part of the parasite's DNA and reverse transcribed it into man's reproductive cells. It was a vector. 
among the genes it transcribed were the ones responsible for the production of language. The vocal cord parasites vocalization genes were written into the human genome. The parasites were no longer of any use to man now. Man could use his voice as he pleased when he pleased, hindering the parasites courtship vocalizations. Having lost their opportunity to reproduce, the parasites died out, leaving behind only the transcribed genes. The vocal cord parasites were once in symbiosis with man. Its genes even became a part of his. Humans and parasites are extremely close. As such, it will be extremely difficult for man's immune system to eliminate the vocal cord parasites. Even cutting them out will be no simple matter, which is exactly why these ethnic cleansing parasites are such a formidable weapon.